Welcome to Mainland Cycle Center's new vehicle department. Today I want to show you a 2011 Kawasaki Prairie 360 4x4. This is a brand new 2011. This is of course in the camo. These are 360 cc's. Uh, I don't know exactly what the displacement is. It may be 359 or 361, but we call them a Prairie 360. This is four-wheel drive. It has selectable two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. These are shaft drives. You shaft drive to the wheels. Uses a torque converter, automatic transmission. I'm going to show you on the rear end here. First of all, you've got a trailer hitch right here. This is what we call a solid rear axle swing arm rear suspension. Uh, a lot of guys really like this type of setup because it's very simple as opposed to the independent suspension bikes where you have A-arms, uh, you have CV axles, CV joints, CV boots, two shocks. There's just a lot going on back there on the independent suspensions. These are very simple, very durable, very reliable. But one of the things you might notice on this is that inside this wheel there's no rear brake here. Look over here, there's no rear brake here, there's no brake here, no brake here. Where's the rear brake? The rear brake is right in here. And it's a multi-disc wet rear brake. And what we mean by that is that the rear brake is in this housing, built into this housing, and it's wet, meaning it rides in an oil bath. It rides in the same oil that those gears ride in. And what we found with this rear brake is that it stays very clean. And because it stays very clean, you're not as subject to wear out those brakes. As a matter of fact, uh, since we've been selling these bikes, we have yet to replace a set of rear brakes. These have been on the market now since 2003, and we started using the rear brake like this in 2002 on our Prairie 650 when it was introduced. So, just a very good brake. It's one of my favorite features on these bikes is that multi-disc wear brake because it works good, and chances are you'll never wear it out. So, we've also got a little storage compartment right here, toolkit right there. So a storage compartment there. It's got a stainless steel muffler, so the muffler's not going to rot out on you. Uh, big rear racks. Got a tail light that also works as a brake light. Full floorboards. So you got floorboards on each side. These do have a recoil start for backup. There's your oil dipstick to check your oil. These are a single cylinder motor. They're air cooled, but they have an oil cooler. So right under here is your oil cooler, and there's a fan on that cooler so it has a temperature sensor on it if it gets warm it'll turn that fan on to help draw uh, air across that filter that oil cooler it's also got a spin on oil filter so there's your spin on oil filter right there so easy maintenance on that these have hydraulic disc brakes in the front turn this wheel so you can see your disc brake right in there it's got hydraulic discs on the front it's a McPherson strut front suspension. Uh, you have the ability to mount a winch on the front of here. Got dual headlights with low and high beam. In the front, there's your front rack of course. Here's your floorboard on this side. There's your torque converter. These have uh, an automatic transmission of course, but they also have engine braking. Some of the early automatics that came out didn't have any form of engine braking. I mean, when you let off the gas, they just freewheeled. But uh, Kawasaki has incorporated uh, an actuator on here that keeps that belt in there tensioned on deceleration for engine braking. So when you let off the gas, it uses the engine's compression to help slow you down. So let's take a look at some of the controls. Uh, we've got a fuel gauge here. This is your fuel fill, the gas tank. These will run on 87 octane fuel. You do not have to run the premium gas on them. Uh, got a neutral light, oil pressure, and uh, temp warning light, uh, reverse. Uh, it has a check belt light, so if that belt needs service, that'll come on, and then it tells you when you're in four-wheel drive. This is four-wheel drive, and it's selectable two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. So right here is your selectable two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. There's your thumb throttle, front handbrake, so this controls the front brakes. And then right over here, we've got your rear handbrake. Now this is two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive, as we talked about. So when you're in four-wheel drive, just the rear wheels are driving. You put it in your two-wheel drive, just the rear wheels are driving. You put it in four-wheel drive, you engage that front end. 
but that front end is a limited slip front differential. So what it's going to do is it's going to try to send power to the wheel that has traction. And it works really well. Uh, but if there could be a situation where you're not getting full power to both wheels. And in that situation, you can lock the front differential. You just pull this lever and hold it, and that locks your front end. And you've got all four wheels full power when you're in four-wheel drive and holding this lever. So really cool deal. And the nice thing about it is it's just a manual lever. Let one less actuator that you have to deal with uh, and uh, just works really well. And you only need that for a few seconds at a time to get through the mud hole or the hill or whatever you're going through. And so you, you, there's no reason to drive down the trail or down the road with this thing locked. If you've got good traction, you can go that fast. You don't need it locked. So there's your rear handbrake with a parking brake. There, headlights off, low beam and high beam. The green button is your start button. The red button is the stop button or the kill button. And then right down here, there's a gray button. It says override. These have a reverse limiter on them. <coughs> Excuse me. And that reverse limiter limits how fast they'll go in reverse. But if you hold this button, it'll override that reverse limiter. And then here's your choke for cold starting. There. Uh, automatic transmission, as I mentioned. So you've got low, high, uh, low, high, neutral, and reverse. Just move your shifter through the gate like that. There's your ignition switch there. 12-volt uh, power outlet here. The only thing I want to do, we don't do this all the time, but I want to pop the seat off and just show you because these are just really easy to maintain. The battery is underneath the seat along with the air box so your air filter is right there. Just pop a couple of clips and boom, there's your air filter. And this is a foam filter. It's an oil bath filter so it has air filter oil on it and that helps it trap dust and that's a real important part of your maintenance on these bikes is to keep that oil filter cleaned and serviced and lubricated with uh, oil okay. and let's see told you about the recoil start these have an automatic compression release you've got a little fuel valve right here so you've got on off and reserve right in there here's your pointer and you just turn it to where you want it to be these do really good. I personally own a Prairie 360. I also own some 650s and we ride just for fun. I don't have a farm or anything like that. But I tell you, anytime we take them out, the 360 goes anywhere the 650s go. This bike will get you there and back. Uh, the 650s, 750s, yeah, they've got more power. They're a lot of fun, but this is a lot of fun too. Uh, just not quite as fast, but this one will definitely get you there and get you back. So there you have it. That's the 2011 Prairie 360 4x4. All right, we are Mainland Cycle Center, and we're located about 30 minutes south of downtown Houston, just off of I-45 in Lamarck, Texas. Our website is MainlandCycleCenter.com. Our phone number is 409-948-4969. Hey, thanks for watching our video. Give us a call. Shoot us an email. Come by and see us. Just let us know how we can help. That's what we love to do. Thanks.